Hi everyone, and welcome to part 4 of the HeroQuest Heroes painting series. In this episode I'm going to be painting the elf from Avalon Hills and Hasbro's revised HeroQuest. As ever, I'll be matching the character card as closely as possible, and so I'll be using the paints pictured, although of course they can all be substituted. There should be timestamps below as well if you want to skip ahead at any point. And the figure has had a Xenophil Prime. Let's get to it. Let's start with the skin, where I'll be using two thin coats of Cadian Flesh Tone here, desaturated with a little black. You can see me thinning it down on the palette. Like before, neatness is not high on our agenda here, just ensure a nice smooth coverage. I've chosen this approach as opposed to the usual, as she has very fair skin, and I want to control the shadows more. I'm now darkening this further, and using this to touch in the eye area. and I'll be neatening up the skin as I work. I'm then going to paint the eyes with a thinned layer of Vallejo's Ivory. You'll need a good tip on your brush here and just take your time. Be mindful of not over thinning however, so that it doesn't flood the face. Then just dot the pupils in with a little black. For the feathered cloak I'm using scale colours Canterbrick Blue and Violet, again darkened with some black, with a touch of Flow Enhancer as well to aid me. I've chosen these paints as they give a super matte finish, perfect for the soft feathered texture on this figure. A good alternative however would be Cantor Blue and Nagaroth Knight from Citadel. We'll need a couple of coats here to obtain a nice opaque finish. I'm just darkening the second coat a touch more here. For the sword, armour and scale undershirt, I'm using lead belcher with a little retributor armour for the earring. Don't forget the collar like I almost did here. A 50-50 mix of black and violet next for all of the dark leather areas such as the loin sash, around the braces on her arms, and the sword handle. followed by Mediterranean Blue and Screamer Pink respectively for the vials on her belt. These are both darkened with a little black again, but you could quite easily use Calador Sky here instead. The belt will then be based in Rhinox Hide and I'll use Dryad Bark for the vial caps. I'll then tidy up the hair with some white, leaving the recesses darker as much as possible. I prefer this white for the coverage, but any brand will be fine here. With the base coat applied, it's now time for some shading. I'll first create a mix of one part Juki Eye Violet and two parts Nuln Oil with some Agdrax Earthshade for the belt. I'll thin the black and purple mix with an equal amount of Lamia Media as you can see. So here I'm just shading the belt. Thin 
followed by the mix for all of the steel areas and the sword. Now onto the highlights. Returning to our original base mix, I'll be adding in some of Vallejo's Ice Yellow in a few stages before lightening further with some Ivory, plus there'll be a little Mephiston Red mixed in for the lips as you'll see in a moment. I'm now starting to add the Ice Yellow. I'll be looking to cover most of the skin here, leaving only the most shadowed areas at our base and looking to focus the brightest points along her cheekbones, nose and brow. I'll continue blending this up in a few stages, covering less of the skin as I go, but being mindful of just how bright I'm looking to push this, so that I leave myself enough room. I'm now going to start adding the ivory in to push those brightest points even further. Don't forget the fingertips and the knuckles here as you go. Here I'm adding a little ivory to the lip base colour and I'm just highlighting the lower lip. For the steel I'll be brightening the majority of it with Runefang steel, followed by an edge highlight of Stormhost silver. As always we want to leave our recesses dark so be careful not to overload your brush, particularly on the scales. I suggest having very little paint on the bristles and almost dry brushing them with the flat of the tip. Here I'm now highlighting with the silver. We're going to begin adding some definition to the hair now by first coating it in with some apothecary white contrast paint. To continue defining the armour I want to add some tonal interest to it by using some Magus Purple and Griff Charger Grey mixed with some contrast medium as described on the screen. First I'll lay some grey towards the shadows before covering the brighter areas in the purple, soaking it away with a damp brush at the brightest points. Here I'm using the grey to darken just the flat of the blade. I'll then mix one part of silicanum grey with two parts of medium and add two parts of the Griff Charger mix into this. This will be for the scale undershirt only and will require two or three coats which I'll do off camera like I will with the sword. For the cloak and feathered areas I'll return to our base and build up with Mediterranean blue followed with some white sands in the same blending method that we have used previously.
Notice how I'm using the flat of my brush more to pick out the raised edges rather than let the paint flow into our darkened recesses. I'll keep going like this, focusing my brighter colours towards the shoulders and the areas where the light would catch. This is now pure Mediterranean blue. I'll now work in some white sands to brighten these still further. A good alternative here would be a pure white mixed with a hint of Screaming Skull from Citadel. These are our final brightest highlights. For the glowing runes on the sword, I'll use a little white ink to brighten the recess. before applying a thin glaze of Aram and Blue over the top once it's dried. You can see that the sword's now a lot darker from the thin contrast applications earlier. Just a touch of Auric Armor Gold to the earring will suffice here, in fact you could almost skip this step completely. We'll then brighten the base of our dark leather by simply adding increasing amounts of ivory. Onto the belt now, and we'll up the values with Doom Bull Brown, followed by Tusk Gore Fur for the edges, and we'll add a few scratches with this as well. Here I'm just blending the Doom Bull and Tuscal fur. And this is the pure Tuscal fur. I'll then highlight the raised edges of the hair in a thin white, increasing the opacity towards the top with a second layer. Then, moving on to the vials, I'll work Mediterranean Blue up to Aram and Blue, and increase the Screamer Pink values with some ivory. I'll also use this ivory as a bright glint on both of them finally. The base is then coated in astro granite as we have previously, and we'll then glaze some dryad bark and violet over it, as well as some scaven blight dinge. We'll 
We'll follow this up with some screaming scale to pick out the texture and some black for the base of the rim along with a coat of ultramatte varnish to finish it once it is all dried. So here I'm lightly dry brushing on the screaming skull. Then mixing a thin black brown to draw some rough flagstones onto the base, before then painting the rim black and mixing a light grey to highlight the edges. Finishing with a coat of varnish. And here is our completed elf! I had a lot of fun painting this figure and playing about with the different tones of the armour as well as practicing female faces, something that I still feel I need to improve on. The full list of paints used is on your screen and in the description below. This completes the standard box set of miniatures and guides for the monsters can be found on my Facebook page and website. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for all of my future content. But until next time, bye for now.